The Daily Heva Guard is one of the most dynamic guards ever created in Jiu Jitsu. Many world class grapplers have successfully used this guard in very high level competition. This is part one. Part two will cover more Daily Heva variations for both Gi and No Gi. Stay tuned. A very common mistake that many people make is they don't have an angle on their opponent and they're just straight on with them. You want to make sure you get an angle on your opponent sitting basically on their foot so then that way you have a proper angle and knee alignment. So when you have the position, don't have your body straight in front because you're going to put pressure on your knee and your ankle. You want to angle off so then that way you can have better body alignment, better knee alignment and work to attack your opponent better. Also when you're straight on with your opponent, you have less power because you don't have your knees lined up correctly. When you are angled off and your knees are lined up correctly, you can develop more power to push and pull your opponent as well. Daily Heva with far sleeve control provides you with many options in terms of sweeping and attacking your opponent. When you have the Daily Heva with far sleeve control, you have the ability to tip your opponent to the outside. Usually when I get this position, I'm also establishing some sort of leg control as well. When you have far sleeve control and you push their leg out and tilt them towards the far sleeve, you have the ability to sweep them in that direction so then that way you can get on top of them. I also really like to use the far sleeve control to push them away and wrestle up. So I get the far sleeve, I push their leg with my leg, and then I do an S turn with my legs, wrestle up, get a single leg, and then I will do different single leg finishes to get them to the ground. This is a very good option. To establish more control when I do the wrestle up, I'll feed their sleeve in between their legs and feed it to my other hand. When I do that, they can definitely not post as easily and it gives me the ability to also work to grab their far ankle so then that way I can sweep them even easier. Another way of taking advantage of feeding their arm in between their legs is it gives me the ability to attack for a triangle choke. So I will feed their arm in between their legs and then I switch it to my other hand tilt them forward and then bring my legs over so then that way I can attack their head for a triangle. This is a tricky way to attack for the triangle choke by feeding their arm in between their legs from the daily Heva. Also, anytime you can usually kick your opponent away and make them post their hand on the mat, it exposes their back. So I have their far sleeve, I'll kick their far leg away, make them post their hand on the mat which exposes their side and I can attack for their back. Near side sleeve control wing of the daily Heva is when you have the grip of the sleeve that's closest to you. This also provides you with different attacking options against your opponent. It's good to be able to play the gripping options against your opponent from both sides because then you give yourself more variety to attack your opponent. I really like to wrestle up against my opponent with the near side sleeve because it provides me the opportunity to actually drag his arm across. So when I drag his arm across from me and work to wrestle up, it exposes his side more and tends to make it easier for me to wrestle up against them. And as mentioned before, even with the near side, if I can make my opponent post their hands on the mat, it will provide me with the opportunity to expose their side. And if I expose their side, their back is now present for me to attack and I can work to get them from there. A great option if you go to attack their back and they're resisting you is pulling their hips and rolling them in the opposite direction. So I expose their side, I build up to attack their back, and then I pull their hip and roll them the opposite way. This provides me with the option to continue attacking them and then work to get a sweep instead. You could also drag them by, make them post and attack for a triangle choke. This gives me the opportunity to open them up. When I drag them by, I'll also grab their collar, shoot my legs up to attack for the triangle. This opens them up nicely for a good submission attack against them. And instead of dragging the arm across your body, you can then pull it towards you so then that way you open them up for an omoplata. So I'll keep their arm close to me when I make them post so then that way I can shoot my legs up across their armpit and attack for an omoplata instead. The flash arm lock is one you do very quickly so you can lock them up fast. You basically pinch your knees on their elbow and then push their wrist to the side fast so then that way you can get the submission quickly. Be very careful with this one. The cross collar grip with the De La Hiva is a good position to get upper body control against your opponent. So you have the De La Hiva, in this particular one I have ankle control on them and I get a cross collar grip. I'll drop my elbow down so that, that way I can get upper body control my opponent which then provides me with different attacking options compared to if I just had sleeve control against my opponent. I like to use a strong collar drag movement to make them post on the mat so that way I can open them up for a triangle choke. Anytime you make your opponent post on the mat, you can then open them up for a possible triangle choke attack because their arms are preoccupied. The collar drag from De La Hiva is also a great way to take your opponents back. So you hit them with a hard collar drag as you push their leg away. It makes them post their hands on the mat and it also exposes their side so in that way you can attack for their back. I really like to get a strong pant grip on my opponent when I have a collar grip as well because this provides me with the opportunity to do come up sweeps. 
With this come up sweep variation, I have my opponents pant. I tilt them, make them post, and then I work to get an S turn position with my legs so I can build up and then I'll circle their head down so that way I can bring them down to the ground. This is a very, very good sweeping option that many high level grapplers use. And if I also try to do this and my opponent tries to posture up, I could rewind them backwards, bring their leg across my body, and then sweep them the opposite direction. So I work to build up, I get the pant grip, I work to build up, they work to posture up so I can't tilt them down and I rewind them. I also have the option of working to take their back when I do this because what happens is many times when I go to do the come up sweep, my opponent will put their hands down on the mat. Remember, if they put their hands down on the mat and they expose their side, they provide you with the opportunity to attack their back and go for the back take against them. In my opinion, collar sleeve control from the Daily Heva is one of the strongest controls that you can get from this particular guard. It provides you with many options. You can work to do near side positions, far side positions, collar drag positions, and so on. So I highly recommend that you work the collar sleeve control from the Daily Heva because it's just going to expand your attacking options against your opponent. Very often I'll exploit my opponent's positioning by shooting right up to a triangle choke from the collar sleeve positioning. So I have the collar sleeve on them and I see the opening for me to basically pull my legs out and shoot up for a triangle choke. I also have the option to work for an arm drag. So I have the collar sleeve and then I kick their leg out, switch to an arm drag positioning so then that way I can work to go and take their back. And the sweep that I really love to do against my opponents is the balloon sweep. I'll compromise their base, push them backwards, and when I feel them put a little bit of pressure back into me, I'll then bring my knees in and roll them backwards so that, that way I can sweep them. I'll also have the option to lift them and expose them for a triangle choke. So when I go for the balloon sweep, they try to make their hips heavy. And when they work to make their hips heavy, they tend to open up their upper body. So I'll work for the balloon sweep. They go to make their hips heavy, and then I'll work my feet up to attack for the triangle choke. Another good attacking option from the balloon sweep is for me to shift my body and work for an arm bar. So I once again, I go to sweep them backwards. They post their hands on the mat, which then exposes their arms for an arm bar. This is a very good tricky option to submit your opponent. With the deep De La Hiva guard, you want to roll onto your shoulder and get your De La Hiva hook deep across your opponent's far side hip. This provides you with a very strong control against your opponent. This will set up things like barren bolos, this will set up baby bolos, and many other ways to attack your opponent. I highly recommend that you get used to getting into the deep De La Hiva guard because it's going to enhance your De La Hiva system and your arsenal. This is a very good guard to add to your De La Hiva system. With the deep De La Hiva guard, you can then work to get your leg behind your opponent's other leg so you can kick them forward and go for a baby bolo. A baby bolo is a very good option to take your opponent's back. So you get the deep De La Hiva hook and then you bring your outside leg behind their leg, grab their belt, kick them out and take their back. The deep De La Hiva hook also provides me with the option to do Baron Bolo type attacks against my opponent. In this particular scenario, I drop my opponent's butt to the mat, and instead of doing a full barambolo to the back, I basically keep going up with them and I get the mount position against them. So I tip them back, bring them to their butt, and I mount them. In this particular one, I do the regular barambolo. So I bring my knees in, I invert through, get control of their pants, work up their back, so then that way I can get the back mount off of the barambolo. The deep daily heave hook provides you with the option to start adding barambolo type movements to your game. So I highly recommend you add this if you want to do that. Another fun sweep from the Deep Daily Heva is the reverse kiss of the dragon. This is where you get the Deep Daily Heva position in your opponent and then you spin behind your opponent just like the kiss of the dragon but instead of doing it from reverse Daily Heva you do it from regular Daily Heva and you tip them backwards to get the sweep. I also like to take my far leg, put it behind their ankle so that way I can pull it in and chop them and tip them to their butt backwards. This is a pretty simple sweep that can work against a very large amount of opponents to your advantage. And with far sleeve control from the deep De La Hiva, I can put my shin in my opponent's far elbow so in that way I can tip them down very similar to like a spider guard sweep. So I get the deep De La Hiva, I put my shin in their far elbow, put pressure down which then helps me tip them to the side so in that way I can sweep my opponent from this particular position. 
I can also work to get the deep daily heave up and then I'll take my foot, put it in their armpit, kick them away, and I'll use this to get back exposure. So I'll expose their side, build up, and I'll take their back. Very often, I'll sweep them from this particular situation as well. So I work to get the deep daily heave up. I put my foot in their armpit, I kick them away, and I use this to my advantage so I can attack my opponent. Thank you for watching. For more details on the Daily Heva Guard, be sure to visit the Grappler's Guide website. Be on the lookout for part two of our Daily Heva Guard series. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon. Thank you.